Hello, welcome back. The observant among you will notice it is pouring. It was kind of uh, showers and spitting and heavier showers on the way in, but uh, yeah, it's coming down now quite a lot. <laughs> Which is good because I've just got here. Um, yeah, so, first time I've talked in this shelter really. Um, the build videos have been uh, all sort of silent because they've been filmed over weeks and you don't know what you're doing and I've been quite busy so uh, yeah I thought I'd do them as a silent build but you seem to have enjoyed them I'm happy with the shelter um, I'll talk about that in a bit but I'm out I think for two nights uh, we'll see how things go really um, the weather is sketchy you know predictions here <laughs> forecasts it's um, yeah gonna be some rain that's for sure tomorrow might be a thunderstorm we shall see um, lots of food to cook and uh, yeah I've got a list of jobs to do for carrying on with the shelter here bits and bobs um, furniture and stuff so hopefully we'll be able to do some of that maybe tomorrow I don't know if I'll get to today we shall see and yeah be the first time sleeping in here as you can see it is uh, waterproof got a membrane above the boards in the roof um, for the, uh, the live roof on top which is really starting to fill out now um, yeah so get myself a little settled in and get back I was up here just the other day, had some bacon sarnies, doing a few bits and bobs and I brought up some lanterns and some water and that, just so I didn't have to bring it in today. There's still quite a lot of clutter around here. I've got some uh, boards and offcuts over here and some boards and offcuts over here. And over here are the offcuts of the four logs, um, which is obviously going to be good firewood. So I'm going to get it out of the rain, uh, put it under the side of the shelter. And I can process this later. And to the side here, we've got my birch twig broom. Now I was filming a video on making these, but um, there just wasn't enough content uh, and the video didn't look very good. So yeah, I've just had it at home. Now I've got somewhere to bring it. I might even cut down the handle for brushing out the inside of the shelter. But uh, I thought this is a good place to have it now that I've made it.
pretty humid in here. I mean, it's humid at the best of times in here, but with the rain as well, it's just such a thick canopy. I took a couple of um, pieces of the hornbeam down behind the shelter there um, from stalls. They'll grow back. Um, just to let in a little bit of light, but I think I need to take one down here that kind of goes over the shelter. I won't be doing that today though, I need some rope or something. Um, yeah, so some firewood processed. I might do some more if there's a gap in the rain. It's calming down a little bit at the moment. I'm quite wet. <laughs> uh, found a nice bit of oak as well. So I've brought that up. Put that on hold probably. But yeah, um, I was going to talk to you about the shelter a little bit. So, where do I start? Um, the main structure, the logs, is chestnut. It's not from this woodland, it's from one about half hour away, quite nearby, and it's coppice chestnut. Um, so it's coming down anyway and will be regrown and then cut 15 years time or so. And um, yeah, so sustainable. You always get them comments from people, oh, are you using wood? Like they've never used wood for anything in their lives. <laughs> but yeah, it's coppiced uh, chestnut. Um, started off with 25 logs, I think, and being chestnut, not something like pine, it's not the straightest, so I had to kind of get to grips with that. I wasted a log um, because it was just too bent. But um, I think I did a, a pretty good job considering they were a bit wavy. Obviously took the um, bark off them and some of the sapwood just to uh, give them a chance. Chestnut is really good. Um, it'll, take, it'll last ages. My wood store is still looking like new basically and that's two years old now um, yeah so I had to get a few more logs which are a bit more greener for the top bits because I just kind of run out of full lengths I thought where I cut the diagonal cut for the um, roof that uh, I would have be able to use them off cuts but they just weren't long enough um, yeah so the boards for the floor and for the roof um, they were poplar. Um, a forestry friend of mine had a load of poplar so uh, went down and um, used the chainsaw mill and a um, bigger chainsaw than my one to get some boards out of that and um, yeah I cheated. <laughs> I did a log, I did it on camera, it's harder work than it looks and um, there was quite a lot to do so the rest went on the full size mill um, but yeah I got a taste for it and um, I tried something new. So yeah, that was the boards. Um, I had to use a couple of straight poles on the um, ridges on the roof. Just the chestnut and even hornbeam from here was just too bendy and I needed a really flat surface for the boards to go onto. So I used three uh, poles and um, another big chestnut log for the, the top ridge there. Um, what else is there? It's all stood on um, granite rocks. Um, so far, so good. <laughs> um, yeah, the live roof. The live roof, a couple of people said that's some pretty terrible looking turf. It's not standard turf. Um, it's shaded wildflower. Because uh, I'm in the woodland here, and as you've seen, it's rather dark. Um, I thought I'd try that, some shaded wildflower. I was gonna try sedum because it holds the moisture and stuff, so it doesn't need watering. But um, I was really lucky, it was really warm, sunny, leading up um, to putting the turf on. Um, rolled it on, I left some water up here, and it rained for a solid week. <laughs> so I didn't have to keep coming back, I could take a little break, because I've been up here for the last sort of, three weeks doing the shelter. And um, yeah, it got a good watering, and um, it's been sort of on and off since. So other than that first day I've not watered this roof and it's really taken it's really starting to spread I've even got a couple of little flowers I don't know what the selection of wildflowers is so we'll find out um, hopefully I'll get some more this year um, just a couple of yellow ones so far and no they're not dandelions <laughs> um, yeah I'm I'm very happy with the shelter um, maybe I'll do a QA and a on it or a live stream and you can ask me some questions um, it's uh, an Adirondack, a lean-to, a lavu, a Dano hut. This style of shelter has many, many names where it's kind of um, saddle jointed uh, with a, a tilted roof with a small porch area and a fire out the front to warm you inside. 
um, I think Scandinavian original kind of design and then probably taken over to um, the Americas and, and used there by trappers and things and then got its own name from the Adirondack Mountains so yeah like a bovvy shelter a hunting shelter it, it's not supposed to be permanent or anything it's um, a little base camp um, for hunting and things like that um, mine obviously more for camping and things and doing bushcraft at uh, I was going to do the saddle joints uh, just with a saw but I need a, w a video out every week and that was going to take a long time I'd like to try that one day um, and there's something else I'll move on to in a minute but uh, yeah I used the chainsaw just had to really um, but yeah the other thing the fireplace um, big pile of rocks at the moment really I want to redo that one day uh, not too distant future and maybe have a raised fire pit so I'm not always on the floor uh, not so much sort of bending over um, yeah just raise that up a bit and that's where I might do some hand sawn um, saddle joints um, just do a little frame fill it up with clay from the ground here and uh, yeah just um, use the rocks slightly differently but quite looking forward to doing that um, obviously I made a bench as well got a nice overhang all round for um, hanging things on the side for storing firewood put up a load of hanging points for all these kind of lanterns and things um, yeah I'll spend a couple of days here and see what's what things I want to add on this trip I want to do a couple of tables a really short table for inside here for next to where I'm sleeping just putting bits and bobs on maybe candles that sort of thing and I want a little table out the front here as well to the side just so where I'm sat here just easy to put your your cup on and things like that but yeah I've um, mossed the gaps um, just to stop wind kind of going through there wasn't that many gaps to be honest but they've been mossed and I might before winter um, dig up clay and um, clay them as well sort of clay that chinking in um, usually when you put moss in there it's more of an insulation layer to trap the air between the two layers of clay obviously that doesn't matter as much here um, but yeah um, that's going to dry out that moss and probably fall out with the wind and things so I think the clay will just make it a bit more sturdy so I'll probably do that at some point because it's so wet out here I'm not gonna go looking for twigs I'm just gonna process down some of this
Oh, found a few-ish dry-ish sticks because I've let the fire go out now, so that'll be for when I relight it. Keep that dry under here though. The rain has stopped for a minute. I was chilling and kind of lost track of time. So it's starting to get quite dark actually. So I think I'm going to get the fire going because it's uh, starting to chill down a little bit too. Well, to be honest, I've not got that much done today. <laughs> I was just chilling, um, tidying here and there, doing little bits, doing the firewood off camera. But um, got a long day tomorrow to uh, fit some jobs in. Definitely doing the table. The other thing I wanted to do, I didn't think I mentioned, was um, like a backrest. Something for when I'm sat on the front of the shelter, um, just to, to lean back on. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do it. I've had a couple of ideas because the boards go, you know, from front to back. There's nothing to really grab onto for the um, tripod or whatever it is. So it may have to go from the back or something. I'm not sure yet. We'll see. We'll find out tomorrow. And the tables definitely. Um, yeah. So sun's starting to go down. Fire's going nicely. Got that oak to put on for some nice coals. And uh, tonight is chicken kebabs because the chicken needs to be eaten. Uh, it's still thawing a little bit by the fire. And um, yeah, get some food down me, I need it. <laughs> just noticed pretty coincidentally that there's a 
face on these two mirrored boards. Just a happy accident. <laughs> Just put some new wood on and it's smoking. <laughs> Very rarely blows this way, so maybe something to do with the way the setup is. Oh, there we go. <laughs> well, I'm using the sides of the returns here, oops, as a bit of a backrest for now, till I can build something to just sit here, a tripod or something. I can drape a sheepskin over when I'm here, something like that. But yeah, it's good to be out. It's uh. Been a couple of weeks since I've camped. The last camps were the two nights with Simon. Hope you enjoyed them videos. I'm actually going to be out here while the truck one's published, so it'll be fun to see the comments when I get back. But, uh, yeah, I'm just waiting for this chicken to defrost, really. <laughs> I've got some flour and yeast and salt here, and uh, a little warm water. I'm just going to mix up for some pitters. Well, it's starting to come together now. When I've kneaded it a bit, I'll uh, leave it to rest while I deal with the chicken. Got some coriander here. I've got a red chili and some garlic, and I'm just gonna chop these quite fine. And with some spices, a little oil, and yogurt, just make the marinade for the chicken. I should have put some of that yogurt in the naan bread, so not strictly a naan bread, let's just call it a flatbread. A bit of a dollop of yogurt. And some spice, turmeric, paprika, cumin, usual suspects. Give that a bit of a mix. And a touch of oil. Look at that chicken in there. Here's that chicken. Let's give that a good mix. Still a little frozen in places. Soon four out next to the fire. And then we thread these onto a skewer. I'll put a tiny bit of oil on the chopping board here and just going to press this out into a bit of a non bread shape, a flat bread shape as we're calling it now and we're going to do two of them and just put them in the pan Got a pan heating up here and Pulled over some coals just to start that chicken cooking. I'm going to do it quite gently because some of that was a little bit frozen, so we'll keep a good eye on that.
Okay, in with our first naan. Right, so first things first, bit of hot sauce. Tear off some of our naan, or flatbread as we're calling it. Get a bit of chicken, a little bit of yogurt. Wow, that's some juicy chicken. Oh, I love it. Chicken. Oh, that hot sauce as well. Well, this is one great meal to start off this trip. Mm. Juiciest chicken. Mm. Nans have just come out perfect, even though they haven't got the yogurt in. Mm. I was worried this wouldn't be enough food, but there's actually quite a lot, two skewers and two nans. Got one of my favourite beers, Pogo by Wild Beer Company. Cheers everyone to the new shelter. Oh, time for a little chill. Cheers. It's a good beer. It's got um, guava in it. Fruit parallel. Passion fruit, orange, guava. It's really nice. Love it. Right. I think I'll uh, chill by the fire here for a little bit. It's actually quite warm with that fire and this obviously catches a lot of that heat as well. No sign of any more rain at the moment. But uh there was a thunderstorm predicted tomorrow, we will see. Good morning. As you can pray here, it's raining still. It rained from about half hour after I went to bed all night, constantly, which was actually quite nice because that first half hour it was deadly silent and I don't like that much. Just that utter silence. So um, yeah, started raining. It was very relaxing and uh, yeah, I slept quite well. Um, the sun has just poked through, starting to see some sun on the ground. So hopefully when I get up, the rain will stop for a while 
let me get on with breakfast and stuff. <laughs> That'll be nice. It's time to get this uh, fire going for some breakfast. I'll be having some huevos rancheros today, which I've not done at camp in a while. And then on with the jobs around camp. Got here quite a nice selection of avocado, onion, garlic, some tomatoes, coriander, lime, and the chili as well. So I'm just going to process them down for a bit of a salsa stroke guac. Might just keep the avocado separate. So I'm just going to start cutting these down, and I'll probably leave the avocado till just before serving. Either that or squeeze some of the lime on it, to stop it going brown. just taking the seeds out by just taking out the insides like so just so we don't have a watery salsa I've got some black beans in here and a little oil and I'm gonna use some of them onions in with them Then the rest of this, I only used a bit of chilli for breakfast. Gonna take the avocado, put it in here. And put some lime on it just to make sure it don't go brown. I made some corn tortillas at home. I was quite happy with them actually. I uh, didn't want to bring the cast iron press here, so I'm gonna rejuvenate them in the pan before I do my eggs. Well, first up is our eggs.
Oh yeah. Got some black beans here. And of course, some salsa. Some of that guacamole. Or avocado, should I say. Extra little bit of coriander because it's the law. And an extra squeeze of lime because I love it. I've got a little hot sauce over there as well. Now if I do say so, that's a breakfast. Oh yeah. Ooh, table's a little uneven. So I'm gonna get a little bit of my corn tortilla. My first batch of corn tortillas. I've only ever done normal flour ones. Some beans, some of this, some of that. Oh, there's not an awful lot of that chilli, but it's got a little bit of a kick. What a breakfast. Got these wooden discs. They're not perfectly flat, that one's not bad. Um, I wanted bigger, but maybe another day with the chainsaw I'll get some bigger. I'll make a little table. This is the August set I reviewed a while ago. Where you've got the one handle and the bits slot in and Tighten up. Handy. Right, so I'm just going to do three holes in here and we'll call this the top. It's going to go through an angle like this just to spread the legs. There we go, all the holes done at a slight angle. Now I just need to find some poles. I just thought these horn beam that I took down recently to let a little light in, they're probably going to be ideal. No bark scraper with me today, so it will have to be with the knife. Just take the bark off these and then shave down the ends to fit through the holes. I've used the saw to make a a stop mark 
and just use the knife to whittle this down and I've got the angle and this is my final test fit I'm hoping you have to be quite careful that you don't split this but you don't want it too loose either and I think we're all right and I can uh, flush that with the saw one As you can probably hear, the heavens have opened. Hopefully you can hear me. <laughs> it is really coming down. It just, the wind picked up, it went dark, there was thunder, and then downpour. A proper rainforest in here. Like yesterday, it was getting through the canopy, it was enough to get you wet, but this is drenching everything. <laughs> wow. Got my thunderstorm. <laughs> and the shelter is holding up as expected I did bring my table legs in with me, so I can carry on with that. I think I've bring, brought everything else in the shelter, <laughs> hopefully. When a repeat of that last truck camp where the cast iron was out in the rain all night. Had to give that a good rub down and re-season in the oven at home. But uh, we're getting there with that one. Hardest thing is the angle, really. Quite nice this. Beats being stuck in a poxy little shelter, being crouched down, not being able to do anything. Wow, that's a long one. Well, that's one job done anyway. <laughs> it's a bit smaller than I was expecting, but I'll, I'll wait till I've got a bigger slice of a log to uh, make a bigger one. That one might actually be the one for inside. Um, yeah, I'll have to look for a nice big slice, uh, bring down the chainsaw, or look about if I've actually done one somewhere else. But yeah, that's uh, 
going to do for a cup of tea. <laughs> it's uh, just spitting a bit now, well through the canopy anyway, probably a bit harder above it. So it's good to have a little thunderstorm, a bit of excitement. And it just got really dark again so I'm having to put the lanterns on in here. A couple of sort of showers here and there as well. Here we go again. Gotta say I'm loving it. Been a while since I've had this much rain camping. <laughs> and to be in this shelter in it is brilliant. It's even spraying in a little bit here. Wow. Certainly good for the roof anyway. <laughs> Would you look at that? The rain's kind of stopping, still a little bit coming through, but uh, the sun's out. Maybe I'd have turned off my lanterns for now. <laughs> Okay, I'm saying nothing <laughs> from a distance of what is a morel, but I'm pretty sure it's not. Maybe a stink horn or something like that. I didn't think they were that big. <coughs> I thought for a little bit of a change, I'll do a little log cabin fire to get this going. Seems like a good time to get the fire going while it's not raining. Definitely raining. Ooh. It's been thundering again, but I keep missing it with the camera. bit intermittent. 
One, two, three. And it doesn't know its cues. <laughs> the rain showers haven't really been helping the fire. Right, I've got a nice fat piece of beef here. I'm just gonna oil it up a bit. Yeah. And got a pot of salt and pepper. Some of it did leak out in the bag. But I think we're gonna be all right. One side. Two sides. Yeah, plenty. And how are we cooking this lovely piece of beef today? We're in this wax canvas bag. Ooh for this new mini spit from TJM Metalworks. Um, if you don't know them, this, who does the things like the fire anchor and stuff that I use, and I've actually bought something new from him as well. He sent me this, but look at this. It's all uh, hand forged. A nice twist on there as well, help grip onto the meat. So let's give this a whirl. Perfect. So I just need to put the stakes in the ground, proper distance, and stick this in. You can see it's square bar, so it'll hold, you know, all four sides. Pretty more than four sides, really, because this is just like a V-cut. But uh, yeah, I'll link it below. Do lovey stuff. Good uh, maker, as they say now. Oh, and I almost forgot, not leaving it to chance today. Not that that usually is a problem, but... If you have any worries with cooking meat, these things are amazing. This has a battery, a Bluetooth in it, a thermometer, well two thermometers, it tells you the external and the internal temperature. Pretty, pretty clever stuff. So I'm going to shove that in through here, I think. And you've got a line, oh, stab myself, where it needs to go up to. And it'll even give you how long at that temperature it takes to cook. It just connects to your phone. Yes, it's cheating, but you know, you want a nice, nice medium rare cut of beef, don't you? You want it roughly where you can keep your hand for 10 seconds before it becomes uncomfortable, but you can adjust that as you go. And uh, yeah, brown turn, brown turn, brown turn. In case you were wondering, this is what the app looks like. And we need to set up a cook. Beef. Uh, roast joint. I think we've got silver side. And then we want medium rare. And start cook. Got all your temperatures there and it takes a little while to estimate how long it will take. It'll give you alerts and stuff as well. peeled some potatoes just to roast. Well I say roast, I'm not actually really roasting them. I'm gonna use the skillet because I've got no Dutch oven today. But I'll yeah, give them a parboil, they should be fine. And some water in my little pan.
Ooh. <laughs> Slightly missed. All right, here we go. I think what I'm gonna do is go straight down the middle here. First. Ooh. Then I can do kind of proper slices. Should have had more of a rest really, but oh well. Oh, yeah. I'm so hungry. I've made a slightly lumpy gravy, but it's going to do me fine. God, I need this without that lunch. I had a chocolate bar. <laughs> okay, let's try a little bit of meat. Divine. <laughs> oh, the potatoes are soft inside. Oh, yes. Yes, thank you. Here we go. Mm. Spit roast beef, lovely. I'll try one of the rarer bits. It's starting to get dark now, and I am full. <laughs> I might um, walk this beef off and uh, go down to the edge of the woodland, see if there is a sunset. The sky is quite clear at the moment, so I don't know if we're getting rain tonight or not. We shall see. Cheers again. Ooh, that's nice. Well, I'm pretty spent to be honest, even though all I really did is make a table and a lot of food. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to have this hot chocolate and uh, get myself off to bed. So I'll see you guys in the morning for some breakfast.
good morning. Go get the ketchups out. <laughs> been looking forward to this whole trip really. As good as Huevos Rancheros is. Nothing beats a full English. Got up pretty early today because I had an early night. Mm. Mm. Slept well though. It's nice being guaranteed a flat surface to sleep on, not having to find it and having things under your mat and all the rest of it. <laughs> and not having to pack a tent or a tarp or anything. Mm. Still pretty dark in here, I can see the sun kind of coming up. I mean it's been dark in here most of the uh, trip really, hasn't it? Right, that's me all done. Hope you've enjoyed that. It's been a good first couple of nights in the shelter. Good try out and uh, maybe I didn't get that much work done but I forgot some nails as well for hanging points and other things. But next time, next time. Until then, see you later. <laughs>